Jason McIntyre founded the big lead, big time journalist, then gave it all up for the love, admiration of, of Californians, and he worships the sun, and he does our tomorrow's headlines today, which is my favorite segment of the week. It's goofy, it's nutty. Before we get to that, Miles Garrett has apologized. Yeah. Cleveland player said, last night I made a terrible mistake, lost my cool, unacceptable, and selfish. We're all responsible for our actions. I want to apologize to Mason Rudolph. Uh, so Garrett's had multiple uh, infractions this yeah. year of late hits. What was your takeaway? Yeah, you know, this is a 23-year-old kid, and he's going to have this with the with him for the rest of his career, Colin. He's gonna, I don't know how he shakes this. If you listen to Joe Buck calling it last night, he did a great job. He's like, I've never seen anything like this on a football field. And I mentioned to a couple guys here, this reminds me from the violence and the barbaric act, ripping off a helmet and swinging it at somebody of when Ron Artest went into the stands in the NBA and took swings at fans. But he was able to repair his... You know how he did it. He well, changed he, his name to Meta World Peace to, he, re, to, to remove it from Ron Artest, guy who went into the stands fighting. He's also, when you meet him, I think he's done a good job to yeah. create sort of... A, he's a really likable guy. Yeah. So And, and the, the Laker Kobe thing, and he was funny and talked I, about I, his psychologist liked, during the finals. Yeah, I also liked your angle of Freddie Kitchens. He deserves some blame for this, okay? You had mentioned yesterday... The last six Browns coaches were fired after a loss to the Steelers, okay? They felt like they were out for blood last night. Oh, they knocked no. out Juju Smith-Schuster with a dirty hit. Then the kid Johnson, he was bleeding from his ear. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that on another dirty hit that resulted in an injection. This felt like one of those bad moments. It was for the a Browns. Buddy Ryan game. Oh yeah, it was a bad game. game. It was ugly. Yeah. It, I mean, those are those are helmet to helmet hits. All right, let's Oof. do tomorrow's headlines today. What will the headline be after Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson square off? Tomorrow's yeah. headlines today. It's the best game probably of Sunday. Uh, you know how I feel about Deshaun Watson, and I believe the headline will be. MVP, my dear Watson. Thank you. Uh, listen, everybody has Russell Wilson, but last I checked, they don't give out the MVP in November, okay? Right. Seattle's got a tough schedule. I love Deshaun Watson so much. We've been talking about him on the show, I think, three years now. Yeah. One of the best stats I got here, regular season in his career in the NFL and college has never lost a game by more than seven points. It's, you have to go back to high school. No, no. It's This was the Russell Wilson number early in his career yeah. where Deshaun is able to just keep Games close. Yep. Even when he's got no offensive line, he is the ultimate playmaker. And their defense, kind of underrated against the run. They have not allowed a 100-yard rusher in 24 games. Wow. So, Colin, they're going up against the best run offense in the Ravens, Lamar Jackson, uh, Mark Ingram. And I do wonder, you got Bill O'Brien, Romeo Cornell, a couple Patriots guys. You think they call Bill O'Brien, uh, to, um, Tom Brady and Belichick in New England and said, hey, guys, what do you any, – any ideas now that you've seen Lamar up close? I, I like the Texans here. I'm taking the Texans to win, and I like Deshaun Watson to show up big uh, All Sunday. right, Super Bowl 52 rematch. Tomorrow's headlines today. What's it going to be after the Patriots-Eagles oh, game? Everybody – oh, Patriots. They lost a game. They have a bye. This is a layup for the Patriots, right, Colin? The headline will be – Brady loses once in a while. And if you <laughs> see the uh, picture there, Brady dropping the Patriots special. In so the you Super like Bowl. Philly. I do. Now, I got a little nervous this morning. The injury report for the Eagles is bad. Off a of bye, Alshon Jeffries hurt. He may not play. Uh, Jordan Howard, the running back. But I keep coming back to this. When you look at that Super Bowl, they had two weeks to prepare for the Patriots, okay? And the offense was phenomenal with Nick Foles. You don't think they're going to have something up their sleeve for Carson Wentz against the Patriots This here? is the worst offensive line New England has had, perhaps, in Brady's run. Yeah. They're on a third kicker. They have no Gronk and no deep threat. Yeah, they no do vertical not... threat. You talked about that with the Rams, right? Brandon Cooks is out. Who is the vertical threat on the Patriots? They don't. There's. Yeah. And by the way, we, we you look at their numbers, New England's offensive numbers with Brady and Belichick and they're like 15th on yeah. everything. Red zone, rushing, yards, efficiency. Yeah. The guy, you know, I know there's some fantasy football players. You're not one of them. You need to be. Miles Sanders of yeah. the Eagles, a rookie. Uh, he is a nice player. I like him in space. I like the Eagles to win this game outright. Big upset in Philly. All right. Uh, Bears, Rams. Oh boy. oh, boy. What's going to be the headline after that, baby? So, Colin, you caused a bit of a kerfuffle last weekend when you uh, put this tweet out saying when the Rams were losing that uh, the McFay genius card has expired. Yes. I believe the headline will be 
Genius card renewed. <laughs> McVeigh. Listen, you can't bail on McVeigh this early, Colin. It's a little bit harsh. Don't you think it was a little irrational? Of well, you? I think there's uh, I think there's an offensive line crisis. And I do believe, though, Kyle Shanahan has shown me the ability to win several ways. The Rams are kind of, okay, okay, they have an offensive line issue. Outside of Pittsburgh, and they had one last night, and Dallas, who's got a great O-line in this league? That's a big It's an uh, epidemic. Bad O-lines everywhere. The good news is the Bears' defensive line is overrated. This isn't last year's team. Hicks, the big kid in the middle, he's out for the season. Right. Uh, Khalil Mack is like on a milk carton. When was the last time anybody said his name during a game? That's fair. Hasn't done anything in weeks. I think it's a little overrated, this Bears' defense here. And, you know, Maserati, Mitch Trubisky, you know, I joked that he should be named Mazda Mitch Trubisky because he, <laughs> I mean, he's terrible out there. Trubisky does not look like an NFL quarterback. I like the Rams to bounce back here. McVay, let's not sell McVay, okay? Just because Goff has had some struggles on the road. Todd Gurley's not what he was. They do have, the front office has a big order this offseason. They got to fix that offensive line. Let's go back to Miles Garrett suspended for the year and the playoffs. You know, it's it, we were saying this morning, this, this overriding feeling is, well, I, I like Cleveland. Their schedule's easy. <laughs> so Arizona there is not an easy out. Miami is has taken the They've lead. they covered like, five straight no, games. No, Miami, They're not tanking. We, no, we gotta, I mean, yeah. they're, Miami's a tough out. Uh, by the way, you face Baltimore again, who you humiliated, and now Pittsburgh yeah. with that offensive line, no Miles Garrett. Like, this idea that Cleveland's going to run the table— Cleveland's going to lose multiple yeah. times the rest yeah. of the year. And then what happens in the offseason is the big question. You know, Freddie Kitchens, of course, and we will do headlines for 2020, and I can guarantee you Freddie Kitchens is out. He's out. But the question is, can they go after Lincoln Riley? Do they make a run no. at uh, Jim Harbaugh? So, listen, they've got to do something. Here. You not, cannot they, bring back Kitchens. Okay, we agree on that, listen, right? Listen, we know this. When I was looking for work, okay, I, you know, six years ago when I decided I wanted to leave the other okay, place. got it. I talked to a lot of people. I interviewed at uh, MSNBC, uh, CNN, oh, wow. National Geographic. In the end, Murdoch's, Fox, Simpsons, NFL, Fox News, I'm like, yeah, every, Fox Business, I'm like, uh, they. it works. Stuff works there. You look at Cleveland if you're Lincoln Riley. What works in Cleveland? You're, you're not getting the best coaches or the best scouts. Nothing works in Cleveland. So, I, so you're telling me you don't think the Browns are attractive from a, hey, we got Kareem Hunt. We've got. Wait, uh, time out. We got USC's got a job opening. Okay, they're going to get the Baylor kid or or a, a James Franklin or a big name. So you got that job opening. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, I look around the NFL. Um, we talk about Atlanta's got a job opening. I have. Cowboys job might be open. Uh, that's the great job. Uh, well, that's definitely a better Atlanta. job. Than By the way, uh, Jacksonville's job might be open. I get Nick Foles, who was a Super Bowl MVP, and I get a real roster. I like Leonard Fournette mm. having a great year. This is not a good job. Uh, I have, uh, you think it is? I mean, I, I think it is not necessarily the Browns. The organization owner's terrible, right? We know that history of being bad. But when you look at the skill position players, you get an offensive mind in there. This team can win. Colin, the expectations were this team could get to the playoffs. There were Super Bowl bets, lots of them being made on the Browns. Yeah, by dumb guys. Uh, a lot of who money had, on them, Who had too a many lot of money. IPAs. <laughs> All right, we got to go. Don't be the guy in the room with a long, sloppy-looking Untuck shirt. Go to Untuckit.com. The code is HERD, 20% off. Final hour, DeForest Buckner of the San Francisco 49ers. TJ Hushpanjata, too.